Now this is a car that you never see anywhere, a 1970 Mercury Cyclone GT, but this one has a 429 Cobra Jet motor, a 430 rear axle, the drag pack, and it's a Ford test car. This thing was supposed to be crushed. This week's Muscle Car of the Week is super bad for a variety of different reasons. First of all, it's a 1970 Mercury Cyclone GT with the 429 Super Cobra jet engine and the four-speed drag pack option. So that all by itself makes it a pretty rare car, one of 73 made, and also a potent performer that's a ton of fun to drive. But the other reason why this particular car is so cool is that it's not supposed to even be here today. Uh, this is a factory Ford pilot car, basically a test car. And these were all supposed to be destroyed as soon as they were put together. What's that all about? Well, we're gonna tell you. Cars have a life cycle of when they're developed. Uh, originally, they start off as an idea, which turns into a concept car. And the concept car is kind of a sketch or a basic design exercise to kind of figure out what the car is supposed to be. If it passes the concept stage, it goes into what's called a mule or an engineering mule. And in the mule stage, they build a, a running car. It's all hand built. And they test certain things like the feasibility of the suspension and engine and drive line and things like that. Uh, if the company still wants to go forward after the mule stage, it goes into what's called a prototype. And a prototype is a, another kind of hand-built version that's designed to see what it would take to mass produce the car. Uh, if they find it still viable as a prototype, uh, they fire up the assembly lines and then they make the test and pilot cars. And these are cars that kind of evaluate if the assembly line is working properly to make sure that all the pieces go on the proper way, uh, they work out fitment and they work out little details uh, for the assembly process. And after the pilot cars come the actual production versions. This particular car is a pilot car, which meant it was one of the pre-production versions. But it's interesting because this is kind of like, you know, the pre-production drag race car. Uh, they made it with the 429 Super Cobra jet engine, 375 horsepower. Uh, it's got the Ram Air air cleaner with the functional flapper door and the Ram Air hood. This hood is like a mile long, and it's got this scoop here in the hood, and that's actually functional. If you look in there, you can see it's open. And when you open this thing up, You'll see the Cobra Jet 429 air cleaner lid has a vacuum operated door and a rubber seal that attaches to that, making that a fully functional air intake. It's super cool. This car is obviously unrestored, but it's almost all original. I think the only things that have ever been changed on it are the battery and the tires, you know, maybe some tune up stuff over the years, but it's got over 40,000 miles on it, and, and this is how it was. Uh, that 429 Cobra Jet motor makes a ton of power, ton of torque. Uh, this car also has the uh, four-speed transmission. It's got the 430 to one rear gear, which all kind of comes together to make the Super Cobra Jet, which has the drag pack option. Uh, the Cobra Jet by itself was the 429. When you add the drag pack, it becomes the Super Cobra Jet. So I can only imagine that the uh, engineers on the line had a lot of fun with you know checking all the boxes to make kind of a the super bad version of a Cyclone GT in the uh, pilot phase. Uh, and then I can also see why this car was spared. I mean, who would want to crush such an animal? And the, the Cyclones themselves had a variety of different models in 1970. You could get a regular Cyclone, a regular Cyclone GT, or of course the Spoiler. And the Spoiler was kind of the, the rarest of the breed with the uh, stripes and the performance package. But the Cyclone GT that we're looking at has all the performance of a spoiler, it just doesn't have the graphics. This particular car has some other interesting features on it. It's a red on red paint scheme. Uh, we have a copy of the original documentation with the car when Ford produced it that shows uh, they could have had a two-tone underneath that side chrome molding, but in this case that was deleted to make it all one color. Uh, it's got a red interior, uh, it's got an AM radio inside, uh, but there are other elements of the Super Cobra Jet package that this car has to prove it's legitimate. Uh, one interesting one is the oil cooler mounted behind the, uh, behind the grill. That is a factory installed oil cooler, which is a, a Cobra Jet piece. But look where they attach the oil cooler. 
that is a steel AN fitting and it's rusting. You know, today all the AN fittings are aluminum. You never see them steel rusting. That thing's been there since day one. But the car survives in great shape. It's got just over 40,000 miles on it. It still runs and drives uh, in great shape. And uh, the solid lifter 11.3 to 1 compression 429 sounds super bad when you turn the key. There's a few other elements that make up a 429 Super Cobra Jet. The cylinder block has a four bolt main, uh, the special camshaft, it's a solid lifter cam. Uh, it's got high flow heads, aluminum valve covers, and a couple of chrome items like the oil fill cap and the dipstick. But the ultimate proof on this car that it's the real deal is the Marty report, which not only shows that this car was produced with all of these items, but it also makes mention that it was a factory Ford test car. These big Mercuries were family cars, you know, they were supposed to be cool, comfortable cruisers, and this one definitely is. The seats fit like a, a well-worn pair of shoes. It's got a wood rim steering wheel with the rim blow horn function, uh, minimal gauges, there's a tack strapped on the steering column, power disc brakes, power steering, uh, not really too many other options. There's another add-on piece, uh, a speaker control switch under the dash, which is kind of neat, AM radio. Uh, but then you've got a Hurst shifted four speed and the console to uh, row through the gears. And with that 430 rear axle and drag pack, you're doing a lot of shifting in this car. So if you went to your Lincoln Mercury dealer in 1970, uh, it was interesting who they were marketing to. They were called the man's car at that point, and they had an interesting ad campaign for the Super Cobra Jet in which they called it the password to action. And today, you know, we all use passwords all the time, but in 1970, who used a password? You know, a password was something that was spoken and not typed into a computer. So, I don't know, you walk up to your Mercury dealer and say Cyclone and they hand you a box of action, you know, or they hand you the keys to this car. Now, one of the ads I thought was interesting is that they were selling this car to people that were on one side of age 30, for certain reasons, and they were selling the same car to people that were on the other side of age 30. I don't know why age 30 was the, the dividing line, but I'll tell you what, in the Brothers collection there's a lot of neat cars, but this one appeals to people of any age. This big Merc is a great example of a survivor, and you can see some photographs of the little details that make it special on our website at musclecartheweek.com. We also have the Facebook page, uh, you can see pictures, leave comments, even share it with your friends. And if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll never miss an episode of Muscle Car of the Week.